So uh, before we start, before I introduce Jeff, just want everyone to give a big round of applause for Field Day this year. All the volunteers who made it possible. So yes, Field Day this year, I uh, got a look at the preliminary numbers and they were quite impressive. And it's all thanks to everyone who helped volunteer to make this possible. I think this year, we always do better than the previous year, and this year is no exception. So please welcome Jeff, KM6RGO, to the floor, who will be giving us the 2024 Field Day Recap. One more year. It was pretty good this year. It was pretty good this year. But uh, so Field Day 2024 was the 22nd, 23rd. That was, it was a fantastic Field Day. So did we have challenges? Of course, we had challenges, but we overcame most of those challenges pretty well with great teamwork. I think this year we did just a fantastic job with the teamwork. We had more support setting up the antennas, and it was at a much more relaxed pace. It was just an easier plan altogether, and it worked out well. So the great plan just made those improvements uh, excellent. Great venue as always. I think uh, the Georgetown Airport is very hard to beat. Uh, that that location is just beautiful. Stars at night, no inter no radio interference to speak of, and great vistas from that spot. Uh, we did make a, ch a big plan to antenna and uh, radio layouts this year. So the antennas were not strung up in the trees, dipoles. They were a row of beams for the most part. We had a couple of different, we had one off-center fed 80 meter uh, kind of a dipole thing, and that was it. The rest of it was some form of a beam. The vertical, that way down at the end, that had a 10 to 80 on it, uh, but really uh, a good plan. All lined up in a way that the knolls would not interfere with each other, and uh, we made a bunch of, of uh, chokes that helped with that as well. And of course, great food. Mark, uh, Gareth, they did a fantastic job cooking. Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I like freeze-dried meals and everything, but thank you for cooking a nice uh, barbecue tri-tip and chicken. So, I'm <laughs> so a few basic highlights. We had great participation this year. On Saturday, we had 108 people checking in. Uh, we had a Boy Scout troop that showed up with at least a dozen boys that were there for that. Um, and if there were other kids that were there as well. Uh, food was great. Uh, DX Contacts included, well, you can see the list right here. We made DX Contacts all over the place, including first contacts for some of the kids on Gota to Brazil and Chile. So Chile, Czech Republic, Argentina, Australia, Belgium, Cuba, and Dominican Republic, England, Eritrea. How about that one? Germany, France, India, Japan, New Zealand, Panama, and Poland. You have to see the face of the, of the girl that made that contact in Brazil. That was worth every bit of it. Uh, it was fantastic. So 108 uh, of, of people that signed up on Saturday, that's just Saturday alone, 178 was the total of the sign-ins for everybody that went through the whole weekend, 20 of which were youth, and most of them got on the air. Yeah. And of course, we had a, a world famous VE session in Scott, KK7 AIR's hangar. <laughs> Fantastic. So, how do we do? Those are some big numbers. One of the changes we made to the radios was we had two CW stations. One of them was really alternating between CW and phone. But even with that, we, we uh, almost doubled the CW contacts from last year. Uh, we made about the same phone contacts last year, a little bit less, or uh, actually a little bit more, uh, about the same digital. So we had more phone, more CW, about the same digital for a total of 3,128 contacts, 1,100 more than last year. That's a big jump. It was fantastic. And so one of the things we did, we had 30 operators total. Last year, we had 25 operators, so we all had a few more people. But the list of people that made more than 10 contacts also doubled. 
So we, we had, I think, a 12 or, or 14 last year, and here we are at 22 people that had contacts over 10, uh, 10 and over. So that, to me, is a big sign. We, we were able to spread out the workload. People were dividing and conquering and having fun uh, with this. So big round of applause up here to, to, the, to the top few. I mean, they just really kicked butt on this uh, and did a great job of, of just staying busy. The radios were eyes and busy. And I was really hoping Wayne was going to be here to see his, uh, his handsome mug up there. That is the best picture of field day. And I'm sorry to say that. <laughs> That's for you. Good job. Sunrise. <laughs> Good. Now, it's a great picture. So, a big emphasis on GOTA this year, bigger than in the past, but by a wide margin. You can see that we had some, uh, some competition amongst the, 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 the less than one year hams in between uh, Chris and Ramon. They were going to town on, and they stayed up all night. If you look at the log and you look at the hours that they spent on the radio overnight, they started as soon as the kids got off the air and they didn't stop until the morning. It was, it was constant all night long. Of those um, youth, the youth made, there were 16 youth that made 109 GOTA contacts. That's fantastic. For a total, total GOTA contact list of 228 compared to our, I don't know, it was 15 or 20 last year, something like that. So, yeah, this is really a phenomenal effort. Christina and Thomas uh, did a fantastic job of making that place kind of welcoming and fun for the kids. And Tom did a fantastic job of sitting there and mentoring all of those people together. They did a great job. They kept that thing humming and running, and, and it was a fun area. The energy was palpable. You could just tell they were loving it. Well, how we did on bands and modes? Well, 80 was not the band of choice. It usually isn't that much. 40 meters. You can see we did 600 contacts, 607 on 40 meters throughout the whole thing. Uh, 20 meters was 1,100 contacts. 15 was the band of choice. A lot of contacts on, on 15 meters across the whole thing. Uh, really, a digital kind of stayed mostly with, uh, with 20 meters throughout their, their time. But you can see CW and, and uh, phone, of course, was 15. 10 meters made quite a few contacts. Six meters is the one that I, I thought was a surprise. It was really a big deal. A lot of that was digital. Most of it was digital, if not all. And that was across the country. Six meters was open coast to coast in the mornings. So that was a fantastic job, Brian. And I would think it was, uh, it was Emiliano that would, you know, got a hold of the radio with you. And he had a, he had a lot of fun with that. Yeah, six meters doesn't open up like that very often, and we had a good day with six meters. Fantastic. A few two meters, a couple of, uh, one, you know, one and a quarter, 70 centimeter. We had a satellite contact. Hey, Greg. <laughs> I gave us 68. Yeah, sometimes uh, those can be tough, but uh, the, there it is. We made a satellite contact. And, of course, 228 uh, contacts for, uh, for GOTA. So when you look at the modes, uh, you know, and all the different totals that come down, it brings our total up with GOTA to 3,354 3, 3, total contacts for the event. That's a lot. Which gives us a total QSO points of 64,804. Now, I'm going to go back through these numbers again because I was looking at some of the formulas and I see a potential error here. But that said, um, Dennis and I are going to go over this a little bit more. Went through the bonus points. This might not be everything, but take a look. If it isn't, let me know. Uh, emergency power, of course, we have the, the, the 45 kW generator donated by, uh, loaned to us, really, by Scott, KK7AR. He does this every year for us. It's, he yeah, it doesn't charge us gas. We did want to take care of the battery for him, and he looked at us like we were silly for doing that. <laughs> Just, he doesn't expect much for it, but I think he really enjoys doing things and uh, making people happy. Uh, media publicity, we did that, 100 points. Public location, of course. Georgetown Airport did get some random people that came in that heard about it, which is kind of neat. Uh, formal message to uh, Carol, uh, KP4MD, that was sent out. 
Graydon started having trouble with uh, when he was sending it out. Got to work with Scott um, came, uh, came 6 rfb who had his uh, WinLink set up ready to go. And so they got the messages out that way. Uh, W1AW. So the, uh, the CW copy is just, it's okay. It's there, but it's not, it, it's not very good in the beginning. And it starts to clear up. I've got it on my, my rec recording, and I'm going through. It's a little bit of a tough copy, but I'm going to be able to make it out. So we'll be able to finish that um, within the next couple days. Formal message handling. They sent out 20 messages via WinLink. Natural power. Now, here's a little fun thing. Tim forgot his power supply. But what he did do is pull out a 240-amp-hour battery that he solar charged and brought it out to the table and ran the digital station all weekend on that. So that's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty neat for that. Uh, so we would site visits uh, by served agency. Now I know we had someone else on the list uh, in their fire department uh, guy that came in and I can't remember the agency that he worked for. He's on the list. So I was trying to get that uh, agency. It wasn't, but he's a local firefighter, lives in Georgetown, but it's for a state agency. But I also have, we have the convenience of having Scott uh, working at Cal OES. Site visit by elected official Michelle Sammons, Auburn City Council member. Um, she's very sweet. A good friend of mine personally, but really she just was happy to be out there and asked actually a lot of great questions. She's very curious. She's learned a bit. She's come out now a couple of times with us. And so, so she knows more. And I think with, um, with Western States housing up this year in the, the city council building, there's a little more buzz and a little more interest in things going on uh, downtown. She's not licensed yet. I'm working on it. She deserves, yeah, she would do well with that. Uh, educational activity, again, Scott, KK7AIR. He gave us a talk on, of all things, making an antenna out of his railroad track that's on his property. And he used the, <laughs> he used the little, the, the train, I guess the engine, you know, as, a, as an impedance match as he moved it around to get it. And he made some contacts on 80 meters on the track, on the ground. So that was his talk. <laughs> he comes up with some crazy things, that guy. Does a great job, though. But I think he says he's, he says he's all out. So next year we're going to need a presentation that can match that or better. That's going to be pretty tough. He's, he's pulled off some good things these last few years <laughs> for us. Uh, okay, youth participation. Of course, we had 20 youth signing in, 16 um, scouts and youth making those 109 contacts, a big deal. Some of those kids were um, Gary, and I forget his call sign off the top of my head. He, he loaned us his truck to hold up the, basically the, the mast, the pneumatic mast that, that Al KN6AVC, yeah. He gives us his truck every year uh, to, for that mass. It, he just brings it over and leaves it with us all weekend. And uh, his kids, he brought all five of them out. And at least three of them got on the air. His daughter made that Brazil contact. Very, very cool. Yeah, she was thrilled. <laughs> and Daddy was proud. Social media, of course, we did that. And there were people that were, several people that were posting things on Facebook, which was nice. We appreciate that. Uh, satellite QSO, of course, we got that. Uh, go to station, uh, thanks to Tom and in 6H on, on uh, managing that. And a go to coach, same thing. But I just wanted to call out Christina and Thomas as well because uh, they just brought a, a little bit extra energy and some extra fun things. And then the, we'll submit this by web and we'll get 100 points for that. Uh, Dennis is doing a great job with that. So it looks like so far it's 2085. We still have to go through the final accounting on this for the totals. So previous year comparisons to give you an idea of how we've done over the last 10 previous years. You can see that we've done 25, uh, 16 in the contacts and uh, the points up there, but 38. But just looking at the contact numbers, there's something weird about 2023. I don't know. That was a lot. <laughs> but you can see how we've done. Have we steadily improved? It looks like we've gone up and down and stayed steady. In the last couple of years, we started ramping up. But how did we do this year? 
Well, you know those, the number of contacts was higher than ever before. The number of GOTA participants was higher than ever. The number of CW contacts was higher than ever. What's that? Youth was fantastic. So I think we're going to play out the numbers. We're not done yet. <laughs> I'm sorry to say. <laughs> All this anticipation, but we're working on it right now, Dennis and I, and we'll be done probably Tuesday, and we'll do the final submission. We'll get those numbers out. But big hopes. This is going to end up being our biggest one yet. Last year was our biggest before. We think we topped it. So we do have some thank yous, as always. This is just a few. Everybody chipped in and made this very easy. But the food uh, procurement, the cooking, and the prep, we had Mark and Gareth, Brian, Lynn, um, and Chip and Pam serving breakfast. We appreciate it. It is a big deal to bring out breakfast for everybody. It's a lot less campfires to manage in a fire hazard area. We, that's, that's a minor thing. It's mostly you know, wonderful to wake up first thing in the morning and get coffee. So you can walk out there or at night and uh, breakfast, uh, ba bacon and eggs and uh, pancakes, not bacon, but uh, sausage and eggs and pancakes for breakfast. And of course, the tri-tip. Uh, Mark, you know, you were working your tail off back there. He brought the coolest camp kitchen. And I, I mentioned it in the, the conversation, but he built a trailer out to work as a perfect kitchen that nobody could invade his space. <laughs> that was very smart of you, Mark. Otherwise, people are picking off the barbecue and all kinds of things. <laughs> um, you know, IT support, both Jim and Jim, at the event, you did a great job of keeping it running. We had, well, it went off without a hitch. There were no issues, which is fantastic. It also plays to a lot of the preparatory work that goes on ahead of field day. There's a lot of checking and double checking and turning off, you know, things that don't belong and just really having a stripped down computer. These computers are old, um, so any, any donations for that going forward is, is appreciated, but they worked. They worked extra incredibly well, so no problems there. Van Cacna, Dave, N6 OJJ, thank you so much for keeping that rat's nest from being too ratty. It's really tough over there managing the filters. It's a tough job getting those coax where it needs to go, but we did great. You know, one of the comments, though, they, and not related to Dave directly, but indirectly, um, there were, it goes back to the band conditions and then the separation of the antenna plan along with all the chokes that we had set up. Um, there were times when, when the CW was operating on the same band as digital. And Derek identified that maybe he heard a 1 dB difference in the noise floor. Like, that was it. That was barely detectable with the antennas separated the way they were. They were just a few kilohertz apart when that happened. So uh, it, was, it was something else. So it really was a big um, job to, to uh, make the, the antennas do that, that well, the way we had it set up. That was, that was fantastic. So give a big round of applause to Brian and the antenna team. And Randy, he's not here tonight. Um, Randy uh, KATR brought his, uh, he brought a couple of antennas, but a pretty tall uh, 20 meters, 10 to 10, 15, 20 tri band um, military mass, cr uh, you know, crank that thing up to about wow, 50 feet, it looked like. And uh, so that was really the very, very helpful to have that. He had a 40 meter wire beam that kind of sat off and in, in, way off in the corner. So, very good job on Randy. Uh, station managers, so I mean I brought my radio that got used for GOTA, the kids had all kinds of fun. I've got some cleanup to do, but it's fine. <laughs> Russ brought his uh, FTDX, these were all FTDX 10s except for, Russ brought his for, for phone, and Tim, you were using Brian's um, FTDX 10, what do you think, are you trading radios yet? Not quite yet. He did, I'm a little surprised, that's okay. Randy brought his, uh, his Elecraft K3 for people to use. We ended up using it mostly for CW, but it was available for voice and did get used some for voice. Um, like Randy's in there twice, it looks like. John um, brought his 
his K4, his Zellicraft K4 for CW, and that was running um, mostly around the clock also. Campground and generator, and I say campground because not only does Scott make that available to us, but he spends time throughout the year to keep it maintained. And you might not know this, but, you know, trees grow things all over the place, and grass grows very high, and so he makes sure that that stuff gets knocked down. And we were out with the, uh, the crew of people that volunteered out. Aaron was part of that, and Mark, and Tim. Uh, we were all out there mowing things down and weeding a little bit and chipping piles of branches that had been clean, you know, cleaned up. So he, and Scott brought out his chipper. So not only did he bring the 45 kW generator, he brought out a big chipper for us to just clean up. So he had nice mulch to walk through instead of weeds. And VE sessions. Am I missing somebody on the list, Brian? We have, you know, ah, Chip, were you, were, no, I didn't miss that. All right, well, Chip's on there too. So Brian, Scott, Brian, um, Scott makes the facility happen, but he also bought more tables and chairs to make that nice. Anders was there, Don, you were there, and then Chip for the VE session. And how many people did we have for the VE session? Three upgrades from general to extra. That's really cool. One of them's here tonight. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> and of course the antennas and everybody brought their equipment, but the the thing about the, the bringing your equipment there, these radios can be very sensitive to all of this stuff. There's a lot of work towards it. So it's a huge act of generosity to bring your radio out there and, and let other people play with it. It's, um, these, these radios are, they're, they're good radios, but they still need to be maintained, and we've got to be careful with them. But I had a lot of fun watching people enjoy them. Yeah, that's a big number. I did not mention that, but Friday for setup was huge. I did mention it was a lot easier, but with 35 people there for setup, the antenna setup was done by 1 o'clock. Yeah, 1 or 2. We were pretty much done with all of the antennas being set up, which made the rest of the afternoon relaxing, and you could start playing with your radio and all that stuff. So very cool for the antenna team that showed up. So I guess, you know, we come down to it. Did we have fun? These two guys did. They had a blast. They had a blast. They were up all night. And did we learn anything? I think a lot of people did. Uh, were we competitive? Well, you can tell by the numbers, we looked like we were pretty darn competitive. And uh, were the visitors welcome? And to me, that's a big marker of success is were the visitors happy when they came? They weren't just looking around. They stayed engaged. Uh, it was a very big year for visitors. So what do we want to do next year? Well, we need to have an after-action review just to take a look at this. I was hoping to get that done sooner than later, but we'll have to get it done just to look, kind of go over things and document it and see what changes we might want to make next year. Two things I'm really proud of this field day. GOTA, the amount of youth that got on the air with them and, and the amount of people that had fun with that. That was fantastic. But the distribution of the points among more members who spent more time on the radios, that was really cool to me. It wasn't a couple of guys getting all the points. It was a dist wider distribution of people spending time on the radios, everyone having fun, and... To me, that's something to be proud of. That's what makes this club in particular special. And that's it for today. Ooh.